All right, our hockey insiders today every day. Brought to you by Pro-Am Sports. The private signing deadline with Vincent DeHarnay. I would assume there's a DeHarnay Skinner co-sign picture where they're like, Winnie Skinny. Like at some, at some point, up, Jack's yeah, yeah. going to track that thing down. Anyway, go to uh, proamsports.ca. Vincent DeHarnay private signing. Ryan Smith private signing. The deadline for that is April 6th. And the uh, private signing, April 20th with Mike, Mike uh, Krusilniski. And if you want to uh, if you want to go in and bitch about the Blue Jays, the Cooks and Boys would love to hear it. I think they'd have a lot of, uh, a lot of fun <laughs> with that as well. All right, Oilers and starts tonight. Dallas is red hot. They've been rolling in. They've won seven in a row. Like I said, two of those wins against playoff teams, but still they're beating everybody in front of them right now. Oilers looking to bounce back after that weird game against the St. Louis Blues. Let's bring in Jamie McClendon this morning here on the show. Brought to you by Pro Sports. Noodles, good morning. What's going on, man? Not much. Tom Gazzola sleeps in a suit. I feel like I feel like he's like literally like I've never seen the guy disheveled. He's always I mean, he's a handsome guy. I feel like he's put together. I can't believe he's a guy who's late. I, I, I think he would be a guy who would always be early on time, peppy, you know, kind of like a Ned Flanders type of morning. <laughs> hey, how you doing? type of thing. I think one of the re I think we've kind of checked off both boxes here. I think one of the reasons he's always Right at the edge of not being on time. Coming in hot. It's yeah. because he looks so good. He puts a lot of time into that look, right? If you're that good looking, like you want to arrive on time. Plus, a guy like that wants to make an entrance. Yes. He doesn't want to be there. He doesn't want to be there first. He wants to be there yeah. last so everybody can take a peek of what he's got going on. That's the way I feel. About it's got us talking. I haven't yeah. seen Tommy Gazzola in a regular t-shirt in three and a half years. <laughs> you know, he's always wearing something nice. He always looks pretty good. Exactly. Yeah, anyway, he'll have our pre- and post-game show tonight starting at 6 o'clock, and he will be at uh, Hudson's tonight at West Edmonton Mall on Bourbon Street. If anybody wants to swing by and check him out, he'll be getting things set up at 6 o'clock for the Oilers and the Stars tonight. Dallas, uh, like I said, they've beaten a bunch of duds along the way here in this seven-game winning streak, but for a team that it was battling with Colorado and Winnipeg to put together a seven-game winning streak and give yourself the you know, smallest of cushions, uh, things are clicking right now for the Dallas Stars, aren't they, Noodles? Absolutely. And a win is a win is a win. You yep. take it because I heard some whispers when the Oilers rattled off 16 in a row saying, oh, they, you know, against a few dots. Yep. Few. Listen, you're playing against NHL teams and anybody can win on any given night. Just as Calgary last night where Anaheim goes in and wins. Right. So it's um, to me, it's a scenario where Dallas is a very good team. We always talk about cup contenders. We talk about top tier teams. And I'd never hear the Dallas Stars name in that whisper. You, you hear Colorado, you hear Vegas has come back to life, you hear Edmonton, you know, Winnipeg's been in there. Um, out, out east, it's uh, the Rangers, it's Carolina, it's Florida, it's Toronto. And I'm looking, I'm like, okay, well, Dallas is, uh, you know, one point behind the league, league in the National Hockey League. So they have to be taken seriously. I think this is a big test for the Oilers, yes. And it was a weird game the other day. And I will say this. I need to go on record because I thought that was goaltender interference. And I'll tell you why. And I know I'm a goalie hugger. <laughs> but if you look at like the way Skinner reacted is he went to make the right pad save. And whoever that was, I think it was Bushnevich or whoever, stuck his stick in there and hit him twice. So to me, your goal, the goaltender has to be allowed, afforded an opportunity to make the save without being interfered with. At the last second, a stick was stuck in there, and it and it to me it it turned. It didn't turn him, but it it jarred him so that he wasn't able to make that save. That is interference. That is goaltender interference. So right after a call that you got against you, you should have made that call. the The problem that I saw is there was no camera angle that yeah. showed facing Skinner. It showed the overhead, and people are like, "Okay, well, he just stuck his stick in there." If you would have saw the camera angle that went towards Skinner's right pad, you would have seen his right pad interfered. From where that the shot came idea. from, right? Like if you had that look exactly. at it, it might have changed. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that could be a good point. Magically, they didn't have that angle. I'm like, okay, where, where's the other? I kept waiting for the broadcast or whoever in the league to show it and go, that angle needs to be shown. It wasn't shown once, so I don't know if they had it or not. What do you think on the other call? The, the nuge I mean, goal being called back. I mean, there was contact. And if you look at, I think Bennington was interfered with, but it, the question is, is he allowed to 
uh, did he have enough time to recover on the play? Because his reaction, usually Bennington runs hot. If he thought that was interference, he would have jumped up and started chasing the ref around. So I thought it was borderline, but I did think it was interference based on the the letter of the law was the right pad got pushed uh, by Hyman skating through, and that opened up the five hole, and then he had to close at the last second, and RNH slid it through. And Noodles, I guess going off that game, Oilers and Blues, is, is that kind of how you chalk it up? I mean, I know the Blues, they're, they're fighting hard just to remain in the conversation, so they really needed that one, and they played the Oilers tough this season, but what did you make of the Oilers? Was it just one of those nights or a simple case of a few reviews going awry in a, in a one-goal overtime loss and nothing to be too concerned about heading into Dallas tonight? I'm not too concerned because they did get a point out of it. And, you know, that was an amazing play by McDavid to get it to dry, dry. And I thought, I really thought Bennington was awesome that night. He, he, he really made some big saves where that could have opened the game up. I will say this. There was one thing, and this is nitpicking. When you nitpick top teams, you're, you're allowed to do it. But I don't know if you guys saw this. At the start of the third period, they flashed the bench. And Bouchard's got a big smile, and he's joking, joking on the bench, and it's, You know, and his first shift out, what does he do? He turns that puck over and they score on the two on one. And I I text a buddy and I said, that's not being ready to play to start the period. Because that was, you know, it was a bouncing puck. I know it hits his right skate, goes to the middle, give up the two on one. But all I could think about, and this is maybe the old player in me and a crusty old man going, that didn't the optics of that of him laughing it up on the bench and then his first shift out yeah. giving up that two on one again now Bouchard has been a great player but people pick at his defensive game that just didn't sit well with me because that made it two one now the Oilers had to really chase the game if you're ready to start the period and you bear down down on a on a puck along the wall that play doesn't happen so again I'm nitpicking. And I'm, I, I'm not certainly trying to kick him in the junk, but it's just a small detail that I didn't like. And I guess, you know, it's a Tuesday night in March or in April, sorry, early April, that won't have consequences. But I, you know, you want to see guys focused and locked in. And I just, it was a weird play for me. I don't know if you guys caught on to that one. That was a weird one for me. Well, he had, a, he had another giveaway where he went to try and pass it back to Drysaddle, and it led to the other odd man rush where Hayes sort of just stopped up and fired a shot. Yeah. And I, I thought that was another yeah. one where he just wasn't on. I, I, I didn't think he had his best night, put it that way. But, it you know, again, it's easy to sit and kick him in the junk afterwards. He's done a lot of good things, but I just, the optics on that didn't, that kind of bothered me just because you're, you're trying to continue to win. You're trying to win four in a row. You're trying to keep, you know, maybe keep St. Louis out. Although if you're sitting there, St. Louis got the two points. Now they're three points behind L.A. Would you prefer St. Louis in there yeah. or L.A.? Yeah. You know, that's another thing. Well, it was like that Vegas-Vancouver game last night. You're like, well, do you want Vegas to continue to heat up and creep closer to you? Or do you want Vancouver to still stay above you in the race for first? So I don't know if there was really a win-win last night there, but they are within striking distance of the Vancouver Canucks. As far as this Dallas team goes, Noodles, I mean, I, they're, they're, I think they're really deep up front. I like their blue line. Ottinger's interesting to me because I feel like he's better than he's been so far this year. I don't know if he's started to figure out during this seven-game winning streak or not, but what do the Stars have between the pipes right now? Well, they have a star goaltender who has all the makings of being one. So we saw it. I, I think what happened with Ottinger, and this happens all the time. We're guilty of it in the media with fan bases and that. You watch Ottinger play brilliant against Calgary and almost steal that series where, you know, I think that overtime game, Goudreau scores the short side goal, but they had no business being in that series. Calgary was the better team in that particular era. And everyone's like, okay, Ottinger's arrived. He's a superstar. And then what happens is like, okay, we need you to play 55 to 60 games. We need you to sort out like almost like what Stuart Skinner's gone through the last couple of years is, what are you as a goaltender? Are you a 55? Are you a 50-game starter? Are you a 60-game starter? Ottinger has gone through those growing pains as well because he's a young goaltender. Um, so I think they, they have a special goalie there, but I, it still takes the process of becoming that and being consistent takes time with physical and mental maturity. So they, they do have a special goalie there. He's got a lot of skill, and you're right, in a seven-game streak, 
he might have figured it out, but the team might have figured it out in front of him that's helping him, so it might go hand in hand, but he's a good goalie. Well, yeah, just staying with the team here and the opposition tonight, what, what, what do the Stars do best? Like, what is the Dallas Stars' identity, do you think? I think they play a complete game. I think what we have to get away from is thinking the Dallas Stars are Jamie Benn and Tyler Sagan. Yeah. They're not. Not even close That's, anymore. But they have been for years. So when you think of Dallas, you're like, oh, it's kind of an older team. You got Pavelski there. You got Ben. You got Sagan. Those guys are good players because they're slotted properly. Because you have young players now, the Hinses and the Robertsons and guys that have pushed through. Hayskin's a, a star. If you had Miro Hayskin in, in a Canadian market, like people be talking about yeah. Morris with this guy. But because he's in Dallas and it's kind of, hey, like, you know, that team's good, but what do they really have? If you look at the spine of their team, it's pretty damn good. You got a good young goaltender, you got a, a superstar in Haskin. And they, they're D, the way they're built, they're kind of like that Vegas D. You know, they're, they're big and mean and, you know, can play physical. And I think they have really balanced forwards. They don't have Connor McDavid or Austin Matthews or Leon Dreisaitl, but they've got a bunch of really good players and depth. So when, you know, DeBoer is leaning on guys, his third line can go out and, and do damage too as much as his first line can. So that's, that's where I think people get lost. They've got the Vegas model as opposed to maybe – you know, the Euler model or the Leaf model or, you know, other teams, they've got depth in every position. Yeah, they've managed to transition from the good days of Sagan and Ben. You're like, okay, well, what's next? What's going to happen? And then you mentioned Rupe Hints, Robertson comes along, Stankoven's been added now, Wyatt Johnson's, uh, like the third line of Wyatt Johnson, Stankoven, and Jamie Ben. You'd be confident putting them out there against anybody. It's, I think their depth up front is is going to be a major concern for some of these other teams out here. Uh, seven out players here with 20-plus goals. Seven 20-goal seven, scores seven already, too. Yeah. Leading, yeah. I do well, it. I mean, they but, definitely... But that's, you know, that's quiet, though. Like, it's yeah. funny how that doesn't get a lot of play. I did a Winnipeg game the other day. I think Winnipeg's got 12 guys with double-digit yep, goals. they do, yeah. Like, so you're, you're going, okay, yeah, they don't have... A 50 goal score, or 60 goal score, but man, they got a bunch of 20 goal scorers and 30 goal scorers or 15 goal scorers, and that adds depth. And, and we saw last year for a copycat league, that's how Vegas won. Vegas won with depth, and they won by having a fourth line that could, be, you know, be very, very dangerous as well as be hard on you. So, uh, you know, going back to Dallas, you, you're right, that third line could play anywhere because that Johnston kid yeah. he's a hell of a player. And I think he's 21. He's just getting like going, yeah. Yeah, I yeah, know yeah. they, they, they got him going at a young age, and he, he's worked out very well. Noodles, quickly before we let you go, uh, Florida Panthers have two wins, one regulation win since March 14th. Saw him come through Toronto. They go to Montreal on back-to-backs, lose there as well. What's off with the Panthers right now? They Their mojo just looks off. Um, I thought they were terrible against the Leafs. They started poorly. They woke up in the third period and pushed back. Um, you know, they, they do have some weird, like, Echo, or Ekblad left last night's game. Uh, Verhage, it looks like he got, I don't know, be something with his ribs because I think Domi cross-checked him in the ribs and it sounds like he's going to be out a couple weeks. Matthew Kachuk looked terrible that night and then he, he misses last night with the flu, so you could tell. I think there's something going through their team. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm actually calling their game tomorrow. They're in Ottawa. Um so I'll get a, a, a first-hand look at it, and I'm actually there next week. Ottawa, Ottawa goes down there. So I'm actually going to see them a couple times. This, if you look at it, every top-tier team has had some form of adversity or bumps in the road. This is – it was trade de- trade deadline that all of us sitting in studio were going, Florida's best team in the league. Yeah, they looked they, like they, it they, then, they, right? You're right. So now this is their adversity – they still have the framework of a very good team. You know, Bobrovsky wasn't that sharp. Uh, I thought Montreal kind of had a really good game last night and watching it. But um, overall, this is their funk. And they still they still are a really deep and, you know, tough team to play against. Stingy defensively, good goaltending, and they've got really good forwards. But right now, this is their time where it's it's it doesn't look good and, it, and the pieces don't seem to fit. So they got to get healthy. And they got to get 
focus because if they get the Toronto Maple Leafs in the first round, uh, you know, the Maple Leafs will be a, a motivated team too. Noodles, as always, buddy, we appreciate it, man. Thanks for the time, and we'll chat next week. Sounds good. Thanks for having me. There you me. go. Jamie McLennan, one of the best in the biz for Pro-Am Sports. Check them out at proamsports.ca. Signings right now that you can get in on with Vincent Dayarnay, Ryan Smith, and Mike Kershelniski. Uh, that's all happening. The deadline for Vinny is today, so you got to move quick on that one at proamsports.ca.